Uh, we're also extraordinarily pleased today to have with us uh, Dr. Steve Coonan, who is the Undersecretary of Science at the Department of Energy. Uh, he has responsibility for those other two major missions of this facility, improving our intellectual security and improving our energy security. Uh, we, as a, as a laboratory and as a country, are extraordinarily uh, happy to have such talent as Steve's in such an important position uh, in the years where so many challenges are facing us. Steve has been part of this program uh, both while he was at Caltech and elsewhere and led many of the reviews that looked critically. Uh, and I can assure you Steve is very good at asking hard questions. So it's an uh, extraordinarily great personal pleasure to have uh, Steve here to talk to us today. And it is for me a particular pleasure in my first public remarks as Undersecretary for Science to be offering congratulations to Ed Moses and his team, to George Miller in the lab, and indeed to the entire NIF community because I have been involved in one way or another with this project for just about two decades. It seems a long time ago that I chaired the National Academy of Sciences Committee that set out the NOVA technical contract defining the hurdles that had to be surmounted before the NIF could be given a go-ahead. What has kept me involved over the years is that the NIF is, for me, the quintessential DOE project. First, it is a new facility that boldly expands technical limits, indeed marshalling the resources and stamina to design and construct something of this scale, complexity, and multidisciplinary nature can be done only in a national laboratory. And second, this new facility will enable unprecedented work in the DOE mission areas of science, energy, and nuclear security. Tom D'Agostino has already spoken to the nuclear security applications, and I'd like to say a few words today about the science and energy. Science on the NIF is largely about the properties of matter under extreme conditions that we have not yet been able to obtain in the laboratory. High temperatures that rip the electrons from atoms and high pressures that cram ions together transform ordinary matter into an unfamiliar and difficult substance known as plasma. Understanding plasma properties such as how it flows, how it interacts with light, is a central problem in basic science with relevance to the stars and the planets. The NIF will be the centerpiece of a new research effort bringing together atomic and condensed matter physicists, hydrodynamicists, and astrophysicists into the emerging discipline of high energy density science. And please remember that beyond the subject matter, these basic science studies inspire and train young researchers and develop techniques and instrumentation, all of which are essential foundations for more applied work. Now, it has long been the dream to harness fusion for clean and unlimited energy. And certainly our present energy challenges make that dream even more tantalizing. You know, I think one could reasonably argue that fusion is the only form of energy embodied in ordinary matter that we have not yet figured out how to tap into productively. The large multinational ITER project will be attempting full-scale fusion energy production some 15 years from now by confining the plasma with magnetic fields. Experiments on the NIF will pursue an alternative route of creating plasmas confined by their own inertia, hot enough and dense enough to heat themselves through fusion and be a net source of energy. Achieving ignition is a crucial milestone toward inertial fusion energy. In my opinion, it is not guaranteed, but the design of the machine and our understanding of the science are cause for optimism. The National Ignition Campaign planned over the next several years is both challenging and exciting, and we will all watch its progress with great interest. Successful ignition would set the stage for a host of energy applications 
in follow-on facilities. Now, I have learned already to give my boss the last word, or at least let him think that he has the last word. And so I'd like to deliver some words from Secretary of Energy Chu. He deeply regrets not being here and has asked me to deliver the following on his behalf. I wish I could be with you today to dedicate this extraordinary facility. I want to thank all of the members of the partnership who made this day possible, in particular the men and women of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and the National Nuclear Security Administration. The National Ignition Facility will help keep the United States at the forefront of science and discovery. It will allow us to maintain the safety and reliability of our nuclear stockpile, to understand the inner lives of stars and giant planets, and to probe the origins of the universe itself. And if we can achieve ignition, it could lead to game-changing advances in how we generate clean energy. As the world grapples with the unprecedented threat of a changing climate, that is a worthy goal indeed. As one of my predecessors said at the groundbreaking ceremony for this facility, NIF will help assure the national security, the economic health, the energy security, and the scientific leadership of the United States. I commend you for completing the awesome task of constructing the most complex, precise, and powerful optical system in the history of the world. And I look forward to the discoveries that you will make. Thank you all. <laughs>